Donald Trump has been impeached. He's been officially impeached by the House of Representatives. The Senate still has to try him, but he won't be going anywhere because the Republicans have a majority and they're not going to vote yes on impeachment or to convict him. Now, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard voted present on impeachment. So she neither voted yes, nor did she vote no. A lot of people are perplexed by her decision. And she put out a video, a, a statement about that. So after doing my due diligence and reviewing the 658 page impeachment report, I came to the conclusion that I could not in good conscience vote either yes or no. I am standing in the center and decided to vote present. I could not in good conscience vote against impeachment because I believe President Trump is guilty of wrongdoing. I also could not in good conscience vote for impeachment because removal of a sitting president must not be the culmination of a partisan process fueled by tribal animosities that have so gravely divided our country. The gist of it is that the reason she would vote yes is because Donald Trump is guilty of high crimes and should be impeached. And the reason that she would vote no is that this impeachment process is the culmination of a partisan effort, meaning that, in her opinion, this whole impeachment has been done on the grounds that the Democratic Party wants to go on a witch hunt after Trump just for the sake of going after him and not because he's actually guilty of high crimes, which I think contradicts her first point because you just said that he's guilty of high crimes. <laughs> Why not vote yes? However, anyway, that's her reasoning, all right? And so she voted present. Now, there were a wide variety of responses. I just watched Emma Viglin from the Young Turks. I just watched her video about Tulsi Gabbard, and she laid into her, okay? I don't. I, I already knew that she really doesn't like Tulsi Gabbard from the tweets as well. I think she called her a right-winger once or something. Um, she just did again now in the video. Tulsi Gabbard is not seeking re-election in 2020, but that doesn't mean that she is not above political calculations and pandering, but not to her constituents, to the right, to her potential Fox News employers, to her incel male followers. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not holding back anymore because she's come full circle as an alt-right darling with this latest move as she positions herself for the token Fox News Democrat who hates Democrats role and appeases Trump by voting present on impeachment. And, you know, Anna, and Jenk were equally perplexed, albeit less severe in their <laughs> in their wording. And uh, and there's a reason why uh, Gabbard is uh, not voting in either direction. She it appears to me that she wants to pre preserve her optionality in which party to be in uh, and which way to take her political career. But it, that seems brazen. Uh, so I, look. Yeah. I, I'm done trying to figure out Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, um, I don't care about figuring her out. Yeah, it's look, but to me, when she was in Congress and she voted with progressives 90% of the time, I was thrilled to take uh, that vote and, and have her as an ally. 10% uh, of the time when she would vote to keep out refugees, uh, be okay with torture. Uh, and in about every single instance, if there was an issue re regarding Muslims, she would vote against them. Okay, I was not thrilled with those votes. We were honest about all of that, right? And and overall, we were happy to have her as an ally. And now uh, she's done this weird play where she's running for president when, with no chance at all, and that's fine. We had her on several times. I gave everybody a chance. We gave her a chance. We open mind to everyone. And at that time, she's still 90% progressive. Now she's been turning and turning and turning, and now we've gotten to this weird place where she's defending Trump, because think about this, guys, this is so important. When a Democrat who's running for president comes out and says, the, and she used this word a day or so ago, she said that it was a hyperpartisan, okay? <laughs> Since the Democrats have been hyperpartisan, uh, then the Republicans turn around and go, see, even a, a Democratic presidential candidate says that the Democrats are hyperpartisan. And AOC actually had a comment to make about this. Let's take a look. She said, today was very consequential and to not take a stand one way or another on a day of such great consequence to this country, I think is quite difficult. 
that's quite tame, I would say. Okay, that's quite neutral, uh, especially compared to what others have said. <laughs> Jimmy Dore, I think, hosted her last night. I wasn't sure because I was in the middle of filming, so I, I couldn't catch that. But I think she went on Jimmy Dore last night, and I think he was defending her. He started uh, also diving into previous attempts at impeachment when the Republicans were going after Bill Clinton in the 90s and things like that. Okay, now. Look, me personally, my opinion, yes, the scope of impeachment is too narrow. The, the Democrats shouldn't be focusing just on Ukraine. You have so many more things that you can go after Trump for, which are way more valid and are much more severe. Okay, profiting while in office, letting children die in cages, bombing Syria illegally. What are all those? Unacceptable. And so they should have gone after him for those things as well. But they can't because if they go after Trump for corruption, they're going to have to go after three quarters of the political establishment. So they have to focus on Ukraine. After all, he went after their buddy, Joe Biden, right? <laughs> he went after one of the club. And Donald Trump, although he is part of the 1%, he is not part of the DC club. Do you understand? So he's not one of them, so to speak, 100%. Now, that's my concern. Yes, the scope of impeachment should have been wider. However, however, dude, we are talking about Donald Trump here, not Mother Teresa. It's Donald Trump, for God's sake. He's an incompetent buffoon. He shouldn't be anywhere near the Oval Office. He is incompetent and he is corrupt. Of course you should vote yes. This is a no-brainer. Oh my god. Look, man, if there's any partisan hackery going on here, the blame is to lay with the Republicans because they're blocking impeachment just for the sake of being Republicans. That's it. So the burden is on them much more than I would say with the Democrats. Now, can we make critiques of the Democrats? Yes, as I just said, their scope of impeachment is too narrow. Okay. Another thing, and I think Jimmy Dore talked about this, is that Nancy Pelosi didn't prosecute Bush. What is that? You know, it begs the question, why would she not prosecute George Bush, who tortured people and started an illegal war in Iraq, but she prosecutes Trump over a phone call? That could paint the picture that, yes, there is some partisan issue going on here. But at the same time, George Bush is also a Republican. So why didn't you go after him if it's really such a partisan issue, you know? In any case, I think that it is completely bizarre that she didn't go after George Bush. I think I already did a video about this, but she goes after Trump. Should she go after Trump? Yes, she should go after Trump as well. It's, it's not either or. It should be both of them, right? But if we're really going to compare, I mean, George Bush has done way more egregious things than most presidents. For sure. Definitely. Definitely, definitely. I mean, some people have been saying that this whole impeachment circus right now is to cover up the fact that the House almost unanimously voted to continue the Patriot Act under people's noses. So, in case you didn't know that. Again, man, this vote by Tulsi Gabbard is perplexing. You know, I, I think that if you are going to take a stance about, I don't want this partisan hackery going on, this isn't the right moment to do that, honestly, okay? Because Donald Trump is an abomination and you should impeach him. Now, a lot of people who support Tulsi have told me personally that they've been <laughs> pissed off by this, you know? They're really not happy with what she did. I, I don't blame them. And, you know, some people, I think Emma Viglin brought this up, Young Turks were bringing this up, that... One possibility why she did this, why Tulsi Gabbard voted present and didn't vote yes or no, is that she's preserving her options, okay? She's keeping her options open. What does that mean? That means that maybe she wants to be a regular contributor on Tucker Carlson's show, as she has been, although I would slightly give her the benefit of the doubt over that. CNN have been smearing her. It's not like she can go on left-wing uh, networks either. They've been smearing her as a Russian agent. So it's not like she's given much choice. Let's give her the benefit of the doubt for that, okay? But in this argument, what they're saying is that maybe she wants to be 
a regular contributor on Tucker Carlson. Some people have even said that maybe she wants a position in Trump's next administration. I don't know about that. I mean, do you really think Tulsa Gabbard is going to switch to the Republican Party? That could be possible. I mean, anything is possible. But after what Hillary Clinton has been doing and the DNC in general, you know, calling her a Russian agent, I mean, they are trying to chase her out of the party, if you will. But I, uh, I don't know, man. In that case, why wouldn't you just go Green Party or Third Party? Why would why'd you have to go to the Republicans? That's weird, right? Bernie Sanders would never go to the Republican Party just because they were treating him unfairly in the DNC, right? So I don't think that's, I don't know. And the other option is that maybe she wants a position in Joe Biden or Bernie Sanders administration. And that's why she didn't vote either way. I don't know, man. I think it's confusing. And if you were going to take a stance against the partisan nonsense, I really don't think this was the prime moment to do that. Of course, there is partisan hackery going on. Of course, both of them are guilty of this nonsense. Of course, they don't get anything done. All they do is argue the whole time and they screw over the working class. You know why? Because they don't really care. They're not subject to those consequences. They're just getting money from the donor class and living it up. But that's always been the case. That has always been the case. This is nothing new. Now, I don't 100% blame Tulsi Gabbard for not swearing allegiance to the Democratic Party. After all, they are corrupt and they are treating her like crap, calling her a Russian agent and all this nonsense. And she did step down as DNC chair in protest of their treatment towards Bernie Sanders in 2016. So, you know, there are times where she has done the good thing, the right thing. But this right here, I don't know, man. If you're a Tulsi supporter, let me know how you feel about this decision, how it has affected your opinion of her. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But obviously, Donald Trump is not going anywhere. He's still going to be the president. They're not going to convict him in the Senate. So the only way you can get rid of him, if you really want to get rid of him, you go to voteforbernie.org and you register to vote in the primary. Because if Bernie Sanders gets the nomination, it's game over for Donald Trump. You defeat him at the ballot box.